Students, hi, this is Mr. Bob. And in this video, we're gonna talk about subtopic 2.1, motion. Um, before watching this video, I strongly urge you to set up some focus notes in your journal, or you can use a digital template like the one I've listed there, bit.ly slash capital F, capital N template. And if you're doing it by hand, I would suggest you have a colored pencil and a highlighter if you're taking notes to kind of highlight some things that you feel are important. And then after taking the notes, I would say a day or two later, I uh, highly, highly recommend you fill in, add, group, chunk, or otherwise interactive, interactively um, interact with your notes in some way that causes your brain to struggle, okay? Uh, also, it'd be important to identify any points of confusion. Um, making your brain struggle, you can also do sample problems. Uh, remember, this is one great way to get uh, some spaced practice. So what we're gonna be doing, uh, a couple other recommendations is just avoid, try to avoid mindlessly copying everything you, you see on the slides. Um, selectively listen and write or listen to everything, but selectively write what, may, what stands out to you, maybe things that I emphasize. If I give you a sample problem, go ahead and pause the video and try and work it yourself. Again, that's another way of making your brain struggle and helping you learn the material. If you're still confused at the end of the video, mark it as a point of confusion and be sure to follow up with a classmate or with me in the coming days or revisit it yourself later on. Okay, two essential questions for this video. How can motion be described and analyzed using words and equations? And how are displacement velocity and acceleration related to each other? Um, quick acknowledgement, uh, the slides that I'm about to show you were originally created by Tim Lund. I've definitely adapted them for our purposes here, but I wanna make sure I give credit to this person. There's some key vocabulary that you may wanna pause and just keep in mind as we go through it, but I'm gonna list them on each individual slide. So I really don't need to go over it completely now. So how do we know something is moving? Um, you may have seen this video. I try and show it earlier in the year. Um, this is the video of the frames of reference, the two gentlemen kind of uh, walking through certain scenarios. And uh, it is intriguing indeed. And hopefully you get from those videos, the idea that the motion of an object can only be measured if we establish a coordinate system or some sort of backdrop or frame of reference to compare it to, okay? So I'm gonna use the word coordinate system most frequently, but you'll hear oftentimes in physics, people talk about frame of reference. And a frame of reference really is just a, a kind of a fancy way of saying you need some sort of coordinate system to detect and measure motion against. Okay. Um, in this unit, we'll often use a coordinate system where we define one direction of motion as having as being positive in the positive direction and the opposite direction as being negative. Um, and so, you know, it looks like almost like a number line, especially where we just kind of say, okay, one direction is positive, the other direction is negative. negative. A question, when you were using the motion detectors, which you may have used by now, what direction was positive, what direction was negative? Well, if the motion detectors were set up as they normally are, the uh, moving away from where, let's say this is the zero point, moving away from the zero point, away from the motion detector was considered positive, and moving toward the motion detector would have been considered negative, okay? Important to keep in mind. Let's talk about these words, position, distance, and displacement. Um, position, just as it sounds, is whatever is the position of the object with respect to the uh, coordinate system, the origin of the coordinate system, right? So if I am here on a coordinate system and here's the origin and I'm right here, which is two meters off of it, then my position would be two meters, positive two meters at that point. Okay, change in position. If you notice here, this triangle just is a fancy word of saying, a fancy way of saying change in. So if position is X, the change in position would be delta X, okay? So if we consider Freddy the fly in their quest for food, notice they're trying to get this melted chocolate chip and they go ahead and fly in that direction. Hopefully you can hear that noise. So notice the distance that they've traveled in trying to get to that food. I'm kind of designated there is six meters. And the distance really is simply how far Freddy travels regardless of what direction. So Freddie's distance, we would say it's six meters, okay? Um, but, and so like I just said, distance is simply how far something travels. It's as if you had a pedometer on your body or Freddie had a pedometer on their body, okay? But if I wanna figure out something called the displacement, that's different. That is a straight line drawn from where an object starts to where it finishes, and it includes direction. So in this case, while the distance is six meters, the displacement we would say is six meters in a positive X direction. So this makes displacement what something is called a vector, which we're gonna talk a lot about a lot more later on in another session. Um, 
and we say vectors have a magnitude and a direction. So in this case, the vector of displacement has a magnitude of six meters and a direction that we call it, we're calling the positive x direction. Okay, here's another sample problem. This will kind of get at it a little more uh, clearly. Let's say happy stick person walks four meters north and they walk three meters east. And there they end up. And the question is, what was their distance traveled? What was their displacement? Okay, well, let's work through this together here. Um, A, the distance traveled really is just gonna be, again, I'm just gonna add up all the distance that they traveled regardless of the direction. So four meters plus three meters gives me seven meters. What about the displacement? Remember, we have to draw a straight line from where we started to where we ended. Okay, we have to measure the length of that line. So the displacement in this case, this is a right triangle and we're just gonna use a little Pythagorean theorem. The displacement, hold on, just give me some trouble. All right, there we go. Delta X squared equals four squared plus three squared. Okay, so delta x squared equals 25. So the displacement in this case is five meters. And in what direction is it? Um, I'm just gonna say for this, for the purpose of this sample problem, I'm gonna say Northeast. I could become more exact with an actual angle, but this is plenty. But the key thing I want you to, I want you to notice here is the fact that the displacement is clearly different than the distance. The distance is seven meters, the displacement is five meters to the Northeast. So the displacement formula, it does have a formula. Basically, you can see there the displacement equals x2, which we would call the final position, minus x1, the initial position. <clears throat> and typically, this is going to be measured in meters. It could be in centimeters or other units, but meters is going to be typical. OK, let's talk about velocity now. Velocity, really, all it is is a measure of the rate of change of an object's position. So when I, when I say rate of change, I really mean take that object or take that quantity and divide it by time, okay, or the change in time. <clears throat> so in the case of velocity, it's going to be uh, meters, displacement, which is measured in meters, divided by seconds, which is the measured unit of time. So it would be meters per second. So notice here's the equation, delta x, displacement, divided by change in time or change in position divided by change in time. Okay, so this is kind of gets to the essential question number two, the relationship between displacement and velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement over time. Here's a sample problem. Find the velocity of the ball that has a displacement of negative 20 meters in four seconds. Notice, I'm telling you that whatever direction we've defined as negative, that's the direction the ball moved um, for this sample problem. So the givens, we're gonna go through the sample problem, problem solving process a little bit. Uh, the, dis the displacement equals negative 20 meters and the change in time is four seconds. And we know that the velocity is the displacement over the time. So negative 20 meters divided by four seconds gives me negative five meters per second. And notice my, my direction is given by the negative symbol. <coughs> the negative symbol. Okay, let's talk about speed versus velocity. So, velocity is how fast and in what direction an object is moving. For example, we'd say 12 meters per second east or negative five kilometers per hour. Speed is simply how fast an object is moving. It does not care about the direction. So a speed would be something like saying 55 miles per hour or 2.2 meters per second. Your speedometer measures speed, does not measure direction. Here's a sample problem. A runner travels 64 meters in the negative x direction in 32 seconds. We'll find her velocity and her speed. So velocity, let's do that one first. Delta x over delta t. We know the delta x is negative 64 meters. We know the time is 32 seconds. So that is negative 2.0 meters per second. Okay, in contrast, the speed, we don't care about direction. So we're just gonna say 64 meters over 32 seconds, or we would just say 2.0 meters per second. All right, and by the way, I should have specified there that it was in a straight line, just to make sure. Actually I did, because it was in the negative x direction, so that you have to assume that's a straight line. 
Quick question, did you know that the film Speed of Keanu Reeves had no director? It's really true. It's true, because if it had direction, it would have been called Velocity. All right. Acceleration, finally, last thing. Acceleration is a change in velocity over change in time. So notice here we have kind of a relationship between acceleration and velocity, which is similar to the relationship between velocity and displacement. Acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity, just as velocity was the time rate of change of displacement. Um, since final velocity is measured in meters per second, and so is initial velocity, and since time is measured in seconds, then acceleration, the units in acceleration can be a little tricky. They can trip students up. You can think of it as meters per second per second. That's usually what I try and think of it as, but you can also think of it as meters per second squared. And finally, I do want to start introducing you to something that IB will, IB will show you in IB problems. They often will say that meters per second squared is the same as saying meters times seconds to the negative two, right? Because meters over seconds squared is the same as meters seconds to the negative two, if I bring that on top. Um, sometimes that trips students up. Don't worry, you don't have to do with any with this. You don't have to, you don't have to multiply anything with this um, to the negative two. It's just kind of identifying the units. Okay, a couple of simple problems and we're done. Lightning McQueen is traveling at an initial velocity of five, positive five meters per second. They accelerate in 4.0 seconds later, they're traveling at 27.0 meters per second. What is their acceleration? Well, what are our givens? We know that the initial velocity is positive 5.0 meters per second. Final velocity is positive 27.0 meters per second. And the change in time is 4.0 seconds. So we know the acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, which is also final velocity minus initial velocity over the change in time. So that would be 27.0 minus 5.0 divided by 4.0, which is 22.0 divided by 4.0. And that would be five and a half, right? 5.5 .5 meters per second. I'm going to put a positive on there just to accentuate that, OK? So notice acceleration light McQueen is positive 5.5 .5 meters per second. Per second, I almost got my units incorrect. Or I could have said 5.5 .5 meters per second squared. Or I could have written as 5.5 .5 meters seconds to the negative 2. All those are equivalent. Finally, one more. Lightning McQueen is traveling at an initial velocity of negative 30.0 meters per second. He sees Doc the Sheriff and hits the brakes. Exactly 2.0 seconds later, he is traveling at a final velocity of negative 8.0 meters per second. What's his acceleration? Okay, so let's, uh, and I don't know what that second one means. Okay, so the givens, okay, <clears throat> initial velocity equals negative 30.0 meters per second. Final velocity equals negative 8.0 meters per second. Change in time equals 2.0 seconds. So acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. It's the same as final velocity minus initial velocity over change in time. So what do we have here? A final velocity of negative 8.0 meters per second minus an initial velocity of negative 30.0 meters per second divided by change in time of 2.0 seconds. Be careful with your signs here. So negative eight minus a minus means a plus. This would be a positive 22.0 meters per second divided by 2.0 seconds, which is a positive 11.0 meters per second squared. Okay, now I bet a few of you are saying to yourself, wait a second, Mr. Bob, how can Lightning McQueen slow down if his acceleration is positive? Doesn't positive acceleration mean an object speeding up? And the short answer is no. That is a misconception you probably had walking in here, and I want you to stop Kind of leave that at the door, okay? Remember, positive and negative are just directions, right? They tell you in what direction the motion was, and the acceleration tells you in what direction the acceleration was. So notice Lightning McQueen was, let's say to the right was positive. This means Lightning McQueen was initially headed to the left, the negative direction as we've defined it, and he slowed down because he saw Doc, the sheriff, and in slowing down, he was accelerating in the opposite direction because when the acceleration opposes the motion, an object slows down, okay? So that would mean that's why his acceleration is positive. So I also want to make sure you realize there's no such thing in this classroom as deceleration. You just want to talk about the acceleration being positive or negative. And if it matches the velocity, it's going to cause an object to speed up. If it doesn't match the initial velocity, it's going to cause the object to slow down. 
You will get more examples of that. So if you don't quite understand what I just said, please do not um, be too concerned. So there you have it. I hope you've uh, been able to answer the essential questions. If not, you might want to take a few more moments to just think through and maybe add something to your notes. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you soon.